Lesson 11.10, Word Problem Solving, Compare Volumes. This is Lesson 11.11 .11 in the older copyright, and remember, all the previous lessons for this chapter are linked in the description. Volume is the number of cubic units we need to fill a three-dimensional space, and we use length, width, and height as factors to find volume. We can use the strategy make a table to compare different rectangular prisms that have the same volume. We make a table to find all the combinations of three factors whose product equals a given volume and have different sized bases. So we've learned so far that this is a base and that's a base. We can use either one in the formula volume is equal to base times height. We can use volume is equal to length times width times height. The base is just the length times the width. And we've learned to use a 3 as an exponent for cubic measures because we have three dimensions. Here we have rectangular prism A and rectangular prism B. And these two rectangular prisms have the same volume of 30 cubic inches. The measurements are in inches, so it's cubic inches, and this one has a length of 2, a width of 3, and a height of 5. And B has a length of 5, a width of 3, and a height of 2. They're using the same three factors, and if we rotate prism A clockwise, it'll look like prism B. So remember a rectangular prism is a three-dimensional figure in which all six faces are rectangles. Each layer will have the same number of units. So this is a rectangular prism. This is not a rectangular prism because there's some missing here and there's some missing here. When we make a table to find all the combinations of three factors whose product equals a given volume, we can complete the table in an organized way. We don't want to accidentally omit, which means leave out a combination. And we begin by listing all the factors for the given volume. And we write each base dimension that contains one. Then we write each base dimension that contains the next greatest factor. So if our volume was four, we would start with a one times one for the base, and a 4 for a height, then we could do a 1 times 2 for the base times a 2 for the height, 1 times 4 for the base times 1 for the height, and 2 times 2 times 1 for the height, and they would all be 4 for the volume, whatever the units are. By listing them in an organized manner, we won't accidentally leave out a combination. Emma has 15 one-inch cubes, and the cubes measure one inch on each edge. How many rectangular prisms, each with a different size base, can she make using all of the one-inch cubes? So we think we can use the volume formula. Volume is equal to length times width times height, or volume is equal to base times height, and the factors of 15, because she has 15 one-inch cubes. We can make a table showing all of the possible combinations of dimensions, each with different base dimensions, then count our results. So the factors of 15 are 1, 3, 5, and 15. 1 times 15 is 15, and 3 times 5 is 15. Using the factors, we complete our table. We can have a base of 1 unit by 1 unit, that's 15 high. 15 inches high, because it's inches. We can have a base of 1 times 3 for length and width with a height of 5. We can have a base that's 1 for a length and 5 for a width that has a height of 3, or 1 for a length, 15 for a width that has a height of 1, or 3 for a length and 5 for a width that has a height of 1. They'll all have the volume of 15 cubic inches. We can count them, one, two, three, four, five. That means Emma can make five rectangular prisms, and each of their bases will be a different size. 
Now, do you notice I didn't list 5 for the length and 3 for the width? Because it would still be the same size base. See? It would still have a base of 15. So we listed it once in that way. If each set of dimensions needed to contain different factors, there would only be two rectangular prisms for Emma's 15 cubes, because prisms B, C, and E are the same prism that has been rotated around. This one has just been flipped around, so its base is on this side right here, and this one is just laying down. And prisms A and D are also the same prism as it's standing up or laying down. This one has a 1, a 1, and a 15, and this one has a 1, a 1, and a 15. This one has a 1, 3, and 5. This one has a 1, 3, and 5, and this one has a 1, 3, and 5. See? So there would be 1, 2 different rectangular prisms if each set of dimensions needed to contain different factors. Mr. Kim has six cubic feet of soil for a raised garden. This is a raised garden. It's above ground. How many ways can he design the garden with different size whole number base dimensions? So we think we can make a table showing all the possible combinations of dimensions. Then we can count our results. We write the factors for six. We have one times six and two times three. So it could have a base of one foot by one foot, and it could be six feet high, height. That would be six cubic feet for a volume. We could also do a base of one foot long and two feet wide with a height of three feet. We could do one feet in length and three feet in width, that's two feet in height. We could do one foot in length, six feet in width, and one foot high, or two feet in length, three feet in width, that's one foot high. They would all have six cubic feet for their volume. Now, if it was one length and one width and six feet high, that would be too tall and narrow. So that's not a reasonable raised garden, is it? And even if it was one in length and two in width and three feet high, that would kind of be too tall and narrow and wouldn't be reasonable. So some designs are going to make more sense than others. So we count the ways, one, two, three, four, five different ways that Mr. Kim can design the raised garden. Mrs. Kim has three baking pans in the shape of rectangular prisms. And the length of each pan is twice the width. Each width is three times the depth. So the depth would be the height. The depth of the pans are each a different whole number from one to three inches. If the pans are filled all the way to the top, what is the volume of each pan? So we think we can't find the lengths until we know the widths, which are three times the depths of one, two, and three inches. So we know the height as depth is one, two, or three. So that means if the width is three times the height, the depth, then we have 3 times 1, 3 times 2, and 3 times 3 for our width. And if the length of each pan is twice the width, well, 3 times 1 is 3, so we have twice 3, 2 times 3. And this would be 3 times 2 is 6 for this width, that means this is 2 times 6. And 3 times 3 is 9 for the width, that means this is 2 times 9. So we would find these first and then find these next. So now we know for pan 1, it's 6 inches in length, 3 inches in width, and 1 inch deep. That's 18 cubic inches. And pan number 2 is 12 inches in length, 6 inches in width, and 2 inches deep. That's 144 cubic inches. And pan number 3 is 18 inches in length, 9 inches in width, and 3 inches in depth. That's 486 cubic inches. So be very careful as you're listing the different combinations of dimensions. You want to do it in a nice organized way so you don't leave one out by accident. Our next lesson, 11.12, we're going to find volume of composed 
the 3D figures. I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you're doing well. Bye.